Hello and welcome to Analysis. I am Oyi Adekunle. The night of Friday, December 11th, 2020, will continue to linger in the minds of residents of Kankara community in Katsina State. It will be remembered as the day unknown gunmen stormed the all-boys government science secondary school and made away with no fewer than 333 boys. The attack brings back some kind of nostalgia for many as it brings back the terrifying memories of the over 270 girls abducted in Chibok in uh, Borno State in 2015, which sparked global outcry and led to the popular hashtag Bring Back Our Girls. Again, Boko Haram has claimed responsibility for the Kankara attack and the government says efforts are ongoing to secure the release of the boys. Security analyst Roy Okidivier now joins me on the program to discuss more on this. Roy, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Now, first it was Chibok, we also had Dabchi, and now Kankara. We would have thought that this kind of incident will not take place again, considering gains the Nigeria army has continued to record against the insurgents. Are you not surprised at this latest abduction of the schoolboys? Ah, uh, well, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's very unfortunate that um, I am not surprised because um, the, after the Chibok incident, we have appeared in numerous TV interviews and um, local publications, and um, we have been able to establish that there are some schools that are positioned at risk locations, at the outskirts that are vulnerable to bandits and terrorist attacks with um, little or no response time for government security agencies. So I am not surprised that we'll have another one tomorrow because um, we are not ready. And what do you mean by we are not ready? If you were the head of uh, the security, any of the security agencies in the country now at a time like this, what will be going through your mind and what will you be doing? Okay, thank you very much. You see, every human community, whether a school, a market, or a community that is at the outskirts of urban areas right now, they are prone and exposed to bandit attacks, terrorist attacks, especially when they have ample of time to burn down houses, and to cut away goods and services of the people and kidnap at random. Now, when you see that a school is a, it's a community that withdraw international hype and international recognition, and this is one thing that the terrorist groups hope to achieve, then we advised earlier that the government of every state must close down every school that is at a risk-prone area, must relocate such schools to protected areas, must also ensure that every school has armed presence. That is why the Office of the Inspector General of Police has given us approval to have MOPOL um, use licenses. So they would expect that private citizens would communicate with private practitioners in security and provide adequate security. Adequate security should include use of electronic devices that the, the students can trigger that is expected to send messages to XYZ numbers who will react in response time. Then adequate devices are supposed to capture the scene and record in the cloud. So even if the bandits or the terrorists go away with the hard drive, you could download and see footages that will help investigation and recovery processes. Adequate security that we have a professional security guard company providing security for the school, which has risk attachment to whatever security, insecurity incident that may occur. Such private security body has the modus operandi to also liaise with government security agencies to provide the adequate cover. Then adequate security must also include evacuation processes. Is it a fire incident? 
Is it an armed incursion incident? Is this whatever medical incident? What is the evacuation process of the school? What plan has the school put in place? So if we are looking at school security, how many of the students have been trained under covert operations to be able to know when the school is at risk and to know what to do individually as a student? How many schools invite security practitioners to talk to their teachers on immediate action and response action time? You know, so in all of these, these are things that we have put in place and these are things that are available at moderate cost because we are talking about life. And this is a mandate for the government that we expect the government to act upon. Now, the presidency has said troops are closing in on the kidnappers. How soon do you foresee these children uh, being rescued now and safely to? Are you optimistic that all of them will be returned? Thank you very much. You know, if we, if we really confirm, we will be able to assess even open source intelligence to believe that the IG had all the time he needs to have activated community policing. The former Inspector General has written a book, um, Mr. Rasse, has written a book about community policing. The government took it up upon itself to recruit policing, community policing officers. And against the coming of Amotepu last uh, some few months back. So if you also look at it, you will see that as the security architecture that we have built, that people expect to be in place, there must be a community policing system, there must be a liaison system with the public transport system, with the fishermen's community, with the farmer's community, with the hunter's community. Within these three communities, I've told you, I would have been able to know the direction those children were carried to. I would have been able to develop a tracking system to be able to penetrate wherever they are holding them. Don't forget that intelligence should also proceed to know if these are bandits that want to sell these children to a terrorist group. So within our security architecture, there must be aerial command right now by the Air Force to locate and identify places that should be. If you look at our um, strategic um, international capacity for area survey, we will be able to use our GPS system to be able to follow up with what the Air Force is doing to identify where they are. So when you say you want to go and rescue them, what is the collateral damage? So because the children were not trained, because the teachers were not trained, our security architecture would have been able to co connect with their training to reduce collateral damage if we need to enter and rescue them with speed. Let me say by experience, by relocating those children, some of them would have already maybe put themselves at arm's way because they don't have the prerequisite training on such situations. Some of those children may have medical conditions and these medical conditions may escalate, especially those that have asthma and some other heart related conditions. These conditions will escalate and definitely they will need medical support, which may not be available. You know, then some of them may try to escape. You know, some may succeed because of the number and we need to be relocated maybe within the week. Some may put themselves at arm's reach. Then I don't have enough evidence about what the government is doing right now. I don't have the community in the agency that want to keep, um, commit themselves to, to rescue uh, operations. So I don't know what such operations may also yield. But I assure you that right now, some of the children are in medical conditions. Some of them may behave in a way 
that may make the uh, bandits to react negatively, and some of them may try to escape. So I cannot really give you details unless we know what the security agencies are planning, which is not good to put on air right now in order not to preempt their activities. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Let's put our knees on the ground and our, fingers, our hands together and continue to pray. Right. Roy Okidi, VA security analyst, we thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on this very, very important matter. Thank you very much for your time. I will take a short break here, and when we return, we'll continue the discussion on the abduction of the schoolboys in Kankara, Katsina State. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're still talking about the abduction of over 300 schoolboys from the Government Science Secondary School in Kankara, uh, Katsina State. And joining me now for more discussion on this is retired Colonel Hassan Stanlabo, a security expert who now joins me via telephone. Uh, Colonel, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Now, what was your immediate reaction when you heard about that abduction? Well, all that occurred to me was that here we go again, yet another one, mm. because it has now become one adoption per day. And before we finish discussing one, another one comes in. So it's a recurring decimal. Mm. And and after that incident, we saw the governor of Katsina State. Or it, there were reports where that uh, reports had it rather that bandits had taken the boys and then shortly after Boko Haram came to claim responsibility for the attack the government said uh, the the abductors had reached out they were negotiating and Boko Haram said again that they were not negotiating with the government what exactly do you make of all of this back and forth thank you Oye. uh you know Boko Haram is an insolent group all right and mm. um, by definition, insurgents are terrorists driven by extremist ideology mm. with a leadership structure, theocratic agenda, and of course, they always have a global network. That is the definition for insurgents. Why am I taking the pain to define insurgents? It is because I have a fear. I hope the guys that committed these atrocities are bandits are not insurgents, that is, the Boko Haram guys. However, when I had Shekau or a fellow that spoke, was it yesterday or so, who introduced himself as Shekau, saying they were behind this, my fears were that, wow, if these boys have crossed, been handed over to Shekau from the bandits, then we have problems. Mm -hmm. Why do we have problems? We have problems because if they are handed over to Shekau, they would use it as a big propaganda instrument. Even if they eventually decide to negotiate with us, they will bore a very big hole in our ports because they will be demanding for nothing less than billions of dollars. Mm. If, however, these boys are in the hands of bandits, who are bandits? Bandits are clusters of terrorists and violent extortionists who have no ideological or religious inclination. Their agenda is just mere ransom and dispossession of land. If it is with the bandits, we know all they want is a ransom, and we can negotiate, pay the ransom, get our boys out. If we don't hurry to do this, believing, let's believe it is with the bandits. If we don't hurry to do this, I will allow them to cross over because bandits are after their ransom. If they cross over and hand them over to Boko Haram, they will make bigger money from Boko Haram. Mm. You know, in terrorism globally, a, a small terrorist group or bandits could go abduct, like these guys have done, and then send their adoptee to a bigger terrorist group to whom they know such adoptee is of higher value, like Boko Haram. Boko Haram will pay them 
take those adoptees and now make big propaganda out of them. Mm. Those are my fears. Are you there? I'm here. I'm here with you. Now let's look at the response Good. of government. Now earlier I spoke to another security expert, Royal Kidivie, and uh, he spoke about how for quite some time governors had been advised to relocate schools that are located around the outskirts of town because they feared or there were fears that this kind of attack uh, might happen. Now what would you say now about government's response? Do you think that the government was proactive enough? Or if adequate steps had been taken, this this could have been avoided. Uh, in the first place, I believe when we are making recommendations, we should make recommendations that are that are practicable mm. and that can easily be implemented. To so just ask state governors to relocate all schools out of areas that are vulnerable, it isn't as easy as that. They should go and start rebuilding schools again. It's not possible. Instead, what I think we should do is to say we should provide adequate security mm. to all schools and ensure that they are safe for our children. By so doing, all we need to do is to make sure we post in armed men, be they uh, civilian JTF, be they our military, be they the police, whatever it is. And then, of course, enhance on our local intelligence on ground. Mm. We should put proper uh, adequate arrangements to ensure that our kids are safe in their schools. In that aspect, government has failed. Mm. But we cannot take the relo no relocation of those schools as a failure on part of government. No. Government does not have such resources, at least at the state level. Even though we know corruption is ongoing, but I'm looking at the massive injection of funds I would see that materialize. Government does not have such money. Okay? Mm. Now, reaction of government to what has happened so far has been... Exactly. Has that was going time. to be my next question. That's, are, you, are you pleased with the reaction of government so far? Because it's almost a week. Are you, are you pleased? Uh, Do you I, think that we have done enough to I, secure the release of those yes, boys? Yes, my dear. I am, I am not pleased. And I'll start from the president himself. The president is in Daura. Daura is how many kilometers away from Kankara? The president has not bothered to even visit the school. This thing happened right under his nose. He was already in the set. It shows how either insensitive the president himself is or how less consigned and bothered he is about his citizens. Mm. That is one. Instead, he took time off to go visit his count to show you where his priority lies. That is a sign. In the part of uh, the handling of the affairs by both state and federal government, we can see how both of them are giving us confusing figures. Mm. The spokesman of uh, the federal government is saying that uh, only 10 of these boys are missing. The governor on ground is telling us how 333 are missing, but as of yesterday, 17 had strolled back, who we were able to escape. So we still have a balance of about uh, 317 or thereabouts. Okay? Mm. All these are mixed, confusing figures. Now, have we taken appropriate steps to ensure that some level of, uh, 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 um, what do I say now, the, the parents of these children have been pacified enough? Mm. Are we aware that after the Dapchi and Chibok uh, incident, parents lost their lives? So how much of psychological attention are we giving to the parents? Have they received visitations by now from government officials who are assuring them that these kids will be brought over? Has government taken appropriate steps to see that negotiations are ongoing because government said they have been able to discover either where the boys are or where these bandits are? Have you established contact with them? The governor has told us they are negotiating with them. How far has this negotiation gone? Mm. Stop speaking grammar. They give them what they want and collect these children. The children will not be in your presence while the negotiations are going on. So once they are not getting the best of results from you, the children will keep advancing towards the northeast. And once they get to northeast, they are already in check out now. And that is the end. This is five days. 
in terrorism, anything after 24 days, I'm afraid. That is after you've been abducted by kidnappers or whatever. The first two, three days are very, very important. Mm. Very, very important. After that, your abductor, you, the, the, the guys who abducted you are already losing patience. And they move on with you. I hope we are aware of all these principles governing what terrorism, kidnapping, and so on is all about. And then many, many people have actually raised concerns that uh, not, maybe not all those boys may eventually be uh, returned safely. But then again, uh, what exactly are the practical steps that you want the government to take at this time to ensure that all of the boys are returned safely? The only good news I have had here, which I want to believe is true, is that they have established contacts mm. with the bandits. If that has been done, I would advise government not to engage any form of kinetic effort or kinetic uh, action. By kinetic, I mean armed action, legal action. So government has to watch out and ensure that whatever that is ongoing is carried out in a non-violent manner. Mm. Uh, well. Efforts to be made to ensure that our schools are adequately protected. As for now, all of these kids should be back home, especially in the north. And similarly, other northern state governments, I expect them to begin to send back their kids. Mm. Because when something successfully happens like this in Katsina, before you know what, it will be replicated in Zamfara. Mm. Before you know it, it's happening again in Kano and so on. By now, let the kids proceed on their Christmas holidays. Mm. It's already Christmas and New Year. Let them go home. Mm. By the time New Year is over, by 6th, 10th, we begin to know if they can resume. By then, the situation may have been successfully or adequately handled. Mm. Um, and we really, we really hope that, as you said, this is adequately handled. And most importantly, that these boys are returned safe and sound. Thank you very much, Colonel Hassan Stanlabo, for sharing your thoughts with us on this very important matter. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Anya. I appreciate it. Right. On that note, we come to the end of analysis. Thank you very much for watching this episode. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.